Greetings from our garden here at St Bride's Church, Fleet Street, here in the very heart of the City of London. We're delighted that you're tuning into this podcast and a very happy Easter to you all. Do please leave a comment or a like. It's always good to hear from you. And if you'd like to donate to help support these online services, you'll find details in the accompanying text. And now may the light and peace of Christ be with us all as our worship begins. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Please be seated. A very warm welcome to St. Bride's to our choral Eucharist on this, the fourth Sunday of Easter. It's wonderful that you can join us online for this service. We begin with an opening prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Jewish rulers and elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem, with Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power, or by what name, did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a cripple, by what means this man has been healed, be it known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, but which has become the head of the corner. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, 
yet closes his heart against him. How does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who keep his commandments abide in him, and he in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hireling and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. 
I know my own, and my own know me, as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will heed my voice. So there shall be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Reading this morning's scripture in preparation for today, I found it very difficult to get beyond the challenge that is presented by that line of scripture that indicates that we ought to lay down our lives for one another, and particularly as the sentiment is further echoed in Jesus' words, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. It struck me that perhaps one of the reasons that those references can appear so profoundly challenging relates to how we talk about all those who have died for their country in war, where we often hear another reference from John's Gospel, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And we also hear the epitaphs of John Maxwell Edmonds. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrows, these gave their today. Or elsewhere, went the day well, we died and never knew, but well or ill, freedom, we died for you. These are powerful words, aren't they? And we rightly remember the sacrifices of our war dead. But this surely is not, certainly not specifically, what the scripture is pointing us to. Some of the other passages in today's reading help, helps us to unpack this a bit further. For example, in posing the question, how does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help. This surely presents us with a much broader sense of what it is to give of our lives, including what financial and material resources that we have at our disposal. Reflecting on this theme of giving of our lives, my mind turned to the religious life and the commitments that are made by those called to it. And I was reminded of a passage in a novel by Victoria Mackenzie called For Thy Great Pain, Have Mercy on My Little Pain, which imagines a meeting between Marjorie Kemp, the 15th century mystic, and Julian of Norwich, the anchorite who was her contemporary. Julian, as many of you will know, I'm sure, is remembered in particular for her showings, her spiritual writings that have been a great inspiration to many over the centuries. Julian lived in a time of turmoil, but her theology was optimistic and it spoke of God's omnibenevolence and love in terms of joy and compassion. Revelations of divine love 
contains a message of optimism based on the certainty of being loved by God and of being protected by his providence, despite great hardship. She writes, for example, if there is anywhere on earth a lover of God who is always kept safe, I know nothing of it, for it was not shown to me. But this was shown, that in falling and rising again, we are always kept in that same precious love. Although Julian's writings were not published until after her death, she would have been a spiritual authority within her local community to those seeking guidance. The Anchoritic life was one of the earliest forms of Christian monasticism. They were considered a type of hermit, but required to take a vow of stability of place, opting for permanent enclosure in cells often attached to churches. Also, unlike hermits, anchorites were subject to a religious rite of consecration that closely resembled the funeral rite, following which they would be considered dead to the world and a type of living saint. In Mackenzie's novel, Julian is imagined reflecting on her consecration ceremony. I'll read you some of that passage. A nun is a bride of Christ, and so has a nuptial mass. But becoming an anchorite is a death. I had to die to the world. I bade farewell to my friends, and asked them not to attend the ceremony, the ceremony or visit me in my cell. I dressed in black and walked alone to church, my hands trembling a little. I asked God to give me courage and serenity. I was just a woman, but he gave me strength. I stood before the bishop and Master Thomas. Other priests and men of the church stood to the side, witnesses to the ceremony and no doubt curious. It was not every day that a church required a recluse. My voice was quiet but calm as I made my vows of poverty chastity and stability of abode. I gave up my name. For the second time in my life, I was given last rites and felt the cool oil slip across my forehead. Then I lay on the floor and a black cloak was placed over me. A requiem mass was sung, the priest's voices lifting in sorrowful melody. If I hadn't been lying down, I would have swooned. For two hours I lay on the cold stone flags covered by my black cloak. I listened to the voices rise and fall. I smelt the incense as the bishop swung the thurible over me. Then he touched me on the shoulder and I got to my feet. The bishop and the priests followed me into the churchyard singing in in paradisum, the note slow and solemn, each one a step into the next life. My cell was on the north side of the church. I approached it, a sudden wind chilling me as I waited for the bishop's words that were the signal for me to enter. If she wishes to go in, allow her to go in. The choir sang, Be of good courage, thy desire for God is at hand and I stepped inside. The floor of the cell was bare earth, with fresh reeds scattered over it, and violets for a sweet scent. I stood in my cell, and the bishop and Master Thomas scattered earth on my shoulders to remind me that I was come from the earth and would return to the earth. Then they stepped out of my cell, and two workmen stepped forward. In silence they bricked up the door. I knelt on the floor, dazed and fearful. I wanted my mind to be driven deep into God, like a nail. I was fascinated and not a little perturbed by that account, 
But it's important, I think, to remember that the vow of stability to place is one that is common to the Benedictine tradition today, although in rather less stark terms. I've always felt the vow of stability to be particularly countercultural, but I think at its root, it's not really about where we live, it's about with whom we live. And there's another passage in today's scripture that's helpful. And this is his commandment, it says, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. God commands us to love each other. And we can only hope to do this in the knowledge that God first loved us. It's in response to and in showing our gratitude for God's love that we channel his love to those around us in the power that comes from the Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts. This then is an invitation both to a laying down of our lives and to the gift that is the fullness of life in Christ. All glory be to him, now and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, in your mercy, open your arms to all those in need of your spiritual sustenance. Lead them patiently along the fertile path to enlightenment that you alone are the Holy One. We pray for peace in the Holy Land, the region of the Middle East, the Ukraine, Somalia and Haiti. We pray for an end to vengeance, revenge and retribution, that mercy and forgiveness may reign in the hearts and minds of all people every day. May the rage of rancor become historic. We pray that leaders at home and abroad may exercise prudence in their decision-making for the good of all, all serving rather than one serving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are victims of injustice, whether this be in war, conflict, or the realm of their day-to-day -day lives. We pray for those working in the media who risk their lives and or their reputations to bring to light injustices 
of great and small magnitude. We pray for those who risk their own security, being seen as the message rather than the messenger to highlight injustices affecting the ordinary man, woman or child. We pray for those who work tirelessly in difficult and challenging conditions to heal the sick and help the needy, to help people rebuild their broken lives. We pray for all mankind, flora and fauna, creatures great and small, whose existence is marred by pollution and climate change. We pray for those who strive to find ways to heal and sustain your worldly creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the lonely, the bereaved, those who feel they have no friends to turn to in their hour of need. May they feel loved and comforted by your presence. In our own church community, we pray for each other, those we know well, and those who are new to our church. May they enjoy the beauty of our music and welcome the sincerity of our friendship. We pray for the repose of the soul of John Blackburn, who died last Saturday, and for Geoffrey Rose, whose memorial will be held this week. We pray for Ray Jukes and Sarja Jakanovic, the anniversaries whose death fall this week. We pray for Alison, our rector, Jeff and Steve, our associate priests. We pray for our choir. For their hard work, we thank our staff, Claire and James, and our verger, Robin. We thank B and Steve for helping with refreshments. We pray for the Guild of St. Brides and the soon-to-be new members of our PCC. We pray for our Sunday school children. May every day they feel valued and safe. We pray for the leaders of our Sunday school, Joanne and John. Dear Lord, in light of what we especially need in our fractured world, I think of the words of Dag Hammarskjöld. Forgiveness is the answer to the child's dream of a miracle by which what is broken is made whole again, what is soiled is made clean again. Please help us, dear Lord, to achieve this miracle. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of your, your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Will you please stand? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Give. 
accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of his kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us, to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. again from the dead our Lord Jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always amen Peace of Christ. <laughs> 